Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to take an up close and personal, in depth look with the 2015 Nissan Pathfinder. Big thanks and shout out to Nissan for providing us this week long tester. As always, this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the Pathfinder. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test, show you the back seat, third row seat, all that good stuff, and the many unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, Let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. Our SV all-wheel drive tester is finished in Arctic Blue Metallic and features the standard almond premium cloth interior. Charcoal black interior is also available. Of course, you can opt for leather and more premium amenities in the upper trim levels and we'll discuss all of that as we go through the video. So in order to start, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, put your foot on the brake, and hit the dash mount button to go. The Pathfinder features very smooth vehicle speed sensing, hydraulic power assisted, rag and pinion steering, all routed through a four spoke multifunction steering wheel. It's wrapped in leather in our SV tester and features subtle grip bolsters towards the top. Your multifunction controls are located at either side, there's subtle touches of satin bright work, and we'll talk about driving impressions as we go through the video. The current generation Pathfinder directs power to the front or all four wheels through a CVT or continuously variable transmission. Like the unit found in the new Rogue and Murano, it features reduced internal friction for improved overall vehicle economy. You have selectable overdrive at low position for going down steep grades, a leather wrap shift knob, not to mention a backup camera in our tester. Nissan's around view 360 degree camera system is also available in upper trim levels. In addition to standard hill start assist, opting for four wheel drive also gets you hill descent control, not to mention this little rotary dial where you can go between two wheel drive, auto, and four wheel drive lock. So let's go ahead and flip on the standard halogen headlamps, fog lamps, and the hazards. Both front windows are fully automatic. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime a few times to let you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. The Nissan Pathfinder was recently redesigned for 2013 and represents the fourth generation of this long-running nameplate. The biggest differences lie with the design and overall execution. Unlike its predecessor, which had a body-on-frame chassis, the new Pathfinder uses a unibody chassis. It's not the first time Pathfinder has seen a unibody, but it's an interesting change nonetheless. After all, Ford did the same thing with the Explorer back in 2011. The Pathfinder's unibody is also shared with the Infiniti QX60, which was previously known as the JX35. What you'll immediately notice behind the wheel is that it's softer, both in style and the way it hits the road. It's also a much bigger vehicle, offering significantly more interior space and practicality than ever before. The wheelbase has been stretched by 2 inches, overall length grows by nearly 5 inches, and there's 4.4 inches of additional width. Height has shrunk by 3 inches, but 2 inches of that was taken from the ground clearance, which is now 6.5 inches. What's amazing is that, despite the increased dimensions, the Pathfinder weighs as much as 500 pounds less than the previous design, largely thanks to a greater use of lightweight, high-strength steel. The fourth generation has moved away from being an SUV in the traditional sense of the word to tackle the crossover market, catering families who prioritize efficiency and value over off-road ability, but still want a vehicle that's capable of light duty tasks and towing, in other words, a multi-purpose vehicle. Fans of the previous designs may sneer at this change of pace when they consider the rugged outlook of the previous generations, but it has certainly created a more generally appealing, comfortable, and more efficient offering for those families looking for a full-size seven-passenger vehicle. It competes against the Honda Pilot, Ford Explorer, Toyota Highlander, or perhaps even the Dodge Durango considering its 7 passenger hauling abilities. It's available in 4 trims including the S, SV, SL, and Platinum, amongst various sub trims and option packages. It starts at $29,630 for a 2 wheel drive S, or $31,320 for a 4 wheel drive S. Our SV four-wheel drive tester is priced at $35,995, that includes destination and the carpeted floor mats. It's also more aerodynamic, employing front and rear spoilers, rear tire deflectors, and rear suspension fairings to improve drag coefficient by 13%, now rated at 
Nissan claims this is class leading, but what I know for certain is that combined with the weight savings, it'll lead to much greater fuel efficiency in the long run. The styling is another huge difference, it's much less blocky and angled than before, and that may or may not be a bad thing depending on your taste. Looking at it as a whole, the muscular fenders, bold grill, flowing lines, chrome touches, aggressive side sills, and open greenhouse create a handsome vehicle overall. Some recently redesigned competitors offer more upscale and modern designs, but the Pathfinder still offers customers a well-rounded package for the class that's well worth a look and test drive. The Pathfinder comes standard with the 18 by 7.5 inch machine finished split 5 spoke aluminum alloy wheels, wrapped in 235-65 all season tires. When stepping up to the Platinum, you receive a unique set of machine finished 20 by 7.5 inch alloys, wrapped in 235-55 tires. I estimate that it'll take about 120 feet to stop from 60 miles an hour thanks to a four wheel internally ventilated disc braking setup. 12.6 by 1.1 inches in front and 12.1 by 0.6 inches in the rear, with two piston and single piston calipers respectively. Electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, and four channel ABS come standard. The Pathfinder does not currently offer some of the latest safety tech that you get with the Infiniti QX60, including the automatic braking feature, however, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert are standard on higher trim levels. As far as the suspension, the Pathfinder features a fully independent setup with McPherson struts in front with coil springs and a solid 22mm stabilizer bar. Out back, a multi-link setup carries twin tube shock absorbers and a hollow 26.5mm stabilizer bar. Properly equipped, the Pathfinder can tow up to 5,000 pounds. It's not an exciting drive necessarily and doesn't offer any sporty characteristics, but the suspension does a great job of soaking up the bumps and keeping the ride smooth and comfortable on long trips. Overall length is 197.2 inches with a width of 77.2 inches and a height of 70.2 inches with the roof rails. Wheelbase is 114.2 inches and total curb weight for our testers is around 4,427 pounds. The fourth generation Pathfinder is powered by an all aluminum transverse mounted 3.5 liter V6 with 4 valves per cylinder, dual overhead cams, variable valve time, and port fuel injection. The compression ratio is rated at 10.3 to 1 with a maximum engine speed of 6,600 RPM. It develops 260 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 240 pound feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Compared to its predecessor's 4 liter V6, the new engine is down by 6 horsepower and 44 pound feet of torque, but delivers significantly better fuel economy. The 310 horsepower 5.6 liter V8 that was offered in the third generation is no longer available. Performance data should be somewhat similar to the Murano since they more or less share an identical powertrain. I'd estimate the Pathfinder to be around 7.6 seconds to 60, maybe a tad higher considering its larger size and weight compared to that Murano we tested earlier this year. Top speed is around 120 miles an hour. The power feels pretty well matched to the vehicle size, higher performance is never a bad thing, but I never found myself needing anything additional in normal driving. Interior noise levels were also pretty good. You can tell a lot of sound insulation went into the cabin. There's still some characteristic CVT drone, but it's almost negligible. Like other Nissans I've driven this year with the CVT, it's right on par with the Pathfinder's intended purpose compared to its predecessor's 5-speed automatic. As far as fuel economy, the Pathfinder takes regular unleaded and carries a 19.5 gallon tank. The EPA now rates it between 19 miles to a gallon in the city and 26 on the highway for four-wheel drive models. Both represent a 30% improvement over the previous V6 Pathfinder. That's about 5 miles to a gallon for both ratings. Our combined economy was around 22-23 miles to a gallon. During my week of testing, this started to remind me a lot more of just a big Nissan Rogue. You know, we checked out the new generation Rogue earlier this summer, and this one's equipped with the same trim level and same color scheme inside and out. So when you take out like the extra bells and whistles that you can get with the SL and the Platinum and all of that, it's very similar as far as the execution, the simplistic layout of the interior, the excellent ergonomics, and the premium build quality. In the SV and the S for that matter, you have high quality cloth upholstery across the armrest, middle door inserts, and the seat fabric. You also have additional soft touch material on the upper door panels, again giving that more of a premium touch. I also love the texture of the upholstery. The SV has a power adjustable driver's seat with a manual lumbar and a manual passenger seat. Just like the Rogue, I thought these were very comfortable. They may not be quite as form fitting, but they have an excellent amount of lower back support, good lateral bolstering, and all of the seat controls are pretty self explanatory. You have adjustable seat belts and headrests. For a more premium feeling environment, perforated leather seating is also available, as are heated and ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel. 
It's manual tilting telescoping. In this example, down at the bottom you have a prominent dead pedal to the left contrasting floor mats with a little bit of an all-weather texture, and your driver assistance features would be located to the left when equipped. The interior exhibits excellent ergonomics all the way around, a contrasting dash, and you also have the option of a panoramic glass sunroof. The most important thing to take away from the interior is the fact that it has 8.4 cubic feet more passenger space inside, which means greater room up front for the middle row and for the third row passengers. The glove box is locking and offers a tremendous amount of space. I love the damp feature, so you don't have to worry about hitting your shins. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. Most Pathfinders come standard with a 6-speaker audio system unless you go for the Platinum, which has a 13-speaker premium Bose system. That Bose system is also available for the SL. Stepping up from the S to the SV also gets you an upgraded 7-inch LCD color display for your audio system. With that Bose system, you also get navigation, which obviously is not equipped here, and a larger 8-inch screen. The overall interface and stuff feels a little bit dated compared to all the touchscreens and stuff that are out on the market, but it's still extremely easy to use and very functional, so it's kind of hard to knock it, really. Of course, it features iPod, MP3 integration, a single disc and dash CD player, Bluetooth connectivity, and even satellite radio as standard. Up top, you have your sight curtain airbags, grip handles, padded vices, auxiliary sunshades, a card holder, and illuminated vanity mirrors. There's an auto dimming view view mirror with three position garage home link. In the top stack, you have your Bluetooth microphone, LED interior illumination, and reading lamps, all LED, not to mention a sunglass container. Right beneath the infotainment system, you have your basic radio controls, in dash CD player, different media modes, tune, scroll, seek, scan, all that good stuff, and your preset stations. Right beneath that, the SV features a tri-zone climate control system, so you have independent temperature adjustment for both of the front occupants as well as the middle row seat. Fan speed in the middle, front and rear defrost, changing the different modes. In the very bottom of the console, there's a small storage tray with two power outlets. Continuing on back, plenty of satin silver trim and this faux um, brush material almost looks like, a, like an ash wood. All the way in the back. Padded center console, very large, with media inputs, another power outlet, and USB port. It's also a two-tier console, so there's a small storage tray on top. The button on the right corresponds to your trip computer and reset features, and the left is your display brightness. As far as the steering wheel, on the right-hand side you have your cruise control with the left-hand side, the driver information system that shows up in the little digital display in the middle of the speedometer cluster where you can cycle through trip computer, vehicle status, four-wheel drive features, fuel data, and warnings, not to mention um, some personalizable settings. You also have your radio controls and hands-free telephone. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And check out the back seat. What's going on guys? So obviously like we talked about earlier, like the Toyota Highlander, if you're going to be hauling around a lot of people, then the Pathfinder seems like a pretty good option to consider compared to like a big like full SUV. Um, the SV trim obviously has this um, high grade cloth upholstery, the back seat is very comfortable, it's nice and soft, and pretty decent lower back support overall, not too bad. All three headrests are adjustable which is nice and you have a padded armrest here with two cup holders and a small storage tray. The cabin is very roomy. I'm 5'10", and with a comfortable seating position for myself in front, I have probably half a foot of leg space and maybe four, 
four inches or so of headspace. Another nice thing, and I believe the Highlander has this as well, I'll put the link to that video in the top right hand corner of the video, but the back seat is fully adjustable. I mean, not just a little bit, it's quite substantial. You grab the little bars down below here, um, obviously it's a 60-40 split seat, so this whole portion moves and then the smaller portion over here. But you grab this, you can slide it back and forth, then you can grab the handle on the side and recline it. So you can really kick back and relax. I really don't see any downsides to the back seat at all. I mean, it's a very nice environment, very plushy, very comfortable. You don't have the soft touch material on the top portion of the doors like you do up front, but that's no big deal. You still have the cloth upholstery across the midsection here, two cup holders on top. You have extra bottle holders down below. I mean, it's, it's very practical. There's grip handles up top there, a coat hook on the driver's side portion, reading lamps, two storage pockets, not to mention um, air vents back here with the um, panel for the tri-zone climate control system, so backseat passengers can get some um, added control with that. I like these all-weather type carpeted floor mats. They seem pretty durable and add a little bit of color contrast to the interior. The middle um, row seat belts are also adjustable, so it adds a little bit of customizability back here. And of course, there's side curtain airbags. Visibility is also pretty good, I think. Um, I don't, I, didn't, I haven't noticed any blind spots. Um, the C pillar, uh, not the C pillar, the D pillar is a little bit big, I guess, but the B and C pillars are relatively thin. The back glass is all tinted from the factory for a bit of added sun protection. I mean, it's, it's very nice overall. So now let me show you how to climb into the third row. Basically, I mean, obviously, and I'll show this when we get to the trunk portion again, but you can fold the seats flat by just grabbing that recline handle and pushing it forward. Otherwise, there's a small handle on the outer bolster here that you would pull up. It tips forward. This bottom cushion automatically raises. It just collapses the seat, and then you push it forward. That basically creates a lot of room right here that you can climb on in. You would use the little plastic kick plates right there. They're ribbed for a little bit of extra traction and hoist yourself on up. It's really not that hard at all. All right, so hopping in the back, like I said, it's very easy. If you have both of these seats pushed up, you can just walk in here. I mean, even though I'm five foot 10, no issue at all. I can grab this seat, go ahead and pull it back. I said earlier that the Pathfinder feels like a big Nissan Rogue, and it definitely does, but the biggest thing that sets this vehicle apart from the smaller Rogue is the fact that there is so much more back seat space, <laughs> a lot. Um, the seats are not that bad, actually. There's still a lot of padding in them, high quality cloth, you have an adjustable headrest that you can put up and down, or for better visibility, you can actually lay them flat. There's child seat anchors on all three of the um, middle seat portions. There's a child seat anchor right behind um, the back seat portion that I'm sitting on, but not on the left-hand side. There's even some extra air vents back here, one on either side so the back seat passengers can stay ventilated. You have two cup holders on either side. And again, interior space is also very good. The roof line doesn't change a little bit. Maybe it's just a teensy weensy bit less headroom, but legroom still depends on the um, where you have this seat adjusted, but where I have it set right now, which is almost a normal position, I guess. I still, I probably have four inches or so, but normally maybe three. If you need something with third row capability, the Pathfinder is definitely worth considering, especially the fact that you can legitimately sit adults back here. It's not just reserved for children, toddlers, or <laughs> anyone small, so awesome. So I guess that's about it back here. Let's go ahead and check out the cargo space out back. Out back, the Pathfinder S and SV both come standard with a relatively lightweight manual tailgate. A power operating liftgate is available on upper trim levels. Cargo space is also pretty decent. Behind the second and third row seat, you have 16 cubic feet. Fold down the seats, which take almost no time at all and expands to a maximum of 79.8 cubic feet. There are cargo tie downs in the back, a 12 volt power outlet, and underneath the trunk floor you have an additional storage well for added practicality. Along with being able to recline the middle row seats like I showed you earlier, you can also recline the third row seats for greater comfort. And here's another fun fact, if you go to the hardware store, you can fit a full-size pallet back there. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Nissan Pathfinder. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.